Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Father God. Father, this morning, God, we let our praise and our worship flow to you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we pray that you will have your perfect way today in all that we do and all that we say. We ask that you will open up the gates of heaven. Let your healing flow. Let your instructions flow. Let your direction flow. Let your understanding flow. Let your revelation knowledge flow today, O oh God. God, we trust you. We rely on you. And so this morning, we ride on your wings, Holy One. Wherever you desire to take us, that's where we desire to go. It's none of us, and it's all of you. And so today, God, as you use me as your vessel, I trust that you will orchestrate everything that is said today from the word of God that I may articulate those things that the hearers will need to hear, Father God. I thank you the word of God is always alive, operative and active, and it will not return void. It will accomplish, and that we send it out to. And so today, the word of God will fall on the good soil of our hearts, and it will bring about change. And, Father, we ask that in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, welcome to Newness of Life World Outreach Center this morning. We'd like to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. Those of you who are here in person, those of you who are watching by way of media, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, we are glad that you have chosen to join our service this morning. We pray that the Spirit of God ministers to you, again, that he will reveal his promises to you uh, this morning, that you will be enlightened, that you will be edified, educated, receive peace, joy, whatever it is that you need, strength from the Lord, uh, understanding, instructions, whatever you may need this morning, you will be in a position to receive that. So we strongly encourage you to Get your Bibles, get your electronic devices, um, get your pen, your paper, and follow along with us as we dive into the Word of God this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, on last week, uh, we began a series titled, How Do I Depend on God? And Why Is It So Important? How do I depend on God and why? Is it so important? So I want to begin this morning um, going to a foundation of scripture which is very familiar to us, and that scripture is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, and I will begin with the amplified version first. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And it reads, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him and he will direct and make straight and plain your path. Lean on, trust in, and have confidence in the Lord with all of your heart. Okay? I want to read it to you out of the message translation. And it reads this way. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God and run from evil. 
I like that. Trust in the Lord from the bottom of your heart. And don't try to figure everything out on your own. The last translation I want to read is out of the Passion Translation. And it reads this way. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do. And he will lead you wherever you go. Now, I read this passage of scriptures to you in all these different translations because I want you to see the importance here of, of how important it is for us to depend on God. When we look at these scriptures, I see nothing but dependency on him. It's not ever in our own ability that we can accomplish anything in life. I don't care how much money you spend. I don't care how rich your, your family was or your bloodline. I don't care what kind of degrees you have. That will only take you so far. But the word of God tells us over in Proverbs chapter 3 that we are to lean on him. We are to trust in him. We are to have confidence in him, not in our own opinions and ability, not in our own might, but in him. And so it's important that we realize that this dependency that we're talking about on God is very, very important. And so on last week, we learned two things. The Lord, I, was, uh, I mentioned on last week that as I was studying the word of God, studying this particular topic, the Lord revealed two things to me. He said, depending on God involves surrendering and consenting to God's plan. Surrendering and consenting to God's plan. You have to surrender your will and your plan to God, but you also have to consent by giving him permission to be able to do what it is that he desires to do in your life. Because remember, he's a, he's a perfect gentleman. So he's not going to override your will because he's giving you the will to choose. So he's not a God that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. He's not going to make you do something. He's not going to make something happen in your life. You have to consent and give him. You have to come into agreement with his plan and with his will, and then you say, okay, God, I give you permission to be able to speak in my life. Amen? So last week we defined surrender and we defined consent. But I, for the sake of time, I'm just going to summarize that definition, okay? So those of you, if you are watching for the first time and you missed last week, we're going to try to get you caught up, and then we'll move forward from there, okay? So we defined, we said that surrendering is letting go of your own will, your own plans, and every aspect of life, bringing all of your thoughts and your ideas and your deeds under subjection to the word of God. When you do that, you are, are allowing God to guide your steps and direct you. In other words, you give God's permission and you are consenting and agreeing to his guidelines, to his plans, to, to his way of doing things in your life, okay? God has a perfect plan for us. Our plan sometimes is good, but God's plan is always perfected. And I don't know about you, but that's what I want in my life. I want God's perfect plan in my life. He has perfected. He, the word of God has already declared that he's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that we have need of, it's already provided. Our job is to find out what that provision is and then to come into agreement, to come under subjection to that plan and then carry it out. Because remember, Jesus has done all that he's going to do. His work is finished. It's now up to us to walk this thing out. Okay? All right. So we also saw in the scriptures on last week, uh, we went through several scriptures that confirmed 
how God is always with us and how he cares for us. Now, I'm not going to go over all those scriptures, but I will give you the reference and you can write those scriptures down. Okay. These scriptures will confirm how God is always with us and that he cares for us. Okay. The first scripture I gave on last week was Isaiah 41, 13. Isaiah 41, 13, and it says, I am Yahweh, your mighty God. I grip your right hand and won't let it go. In other words, God said, I got you by the hand, and I will not let you go. So he's showing us that we can depend on him, that he's reliable. The second scripture that I gave was Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. And it says, you can look towards the hills from whence cometh your help, knowing that your help only comes from him. Okay. The third scripture was first Peter five and seven. And it says to pour out your worries, to pour out your stress, to to cast all of your care on the Lord because he cares for you. Okay. And then the last scripture I gave was Isaiah chapter 40 and 29, where it talks about God has given power to the faint and weary. So when I look at all of these scriptures, I see how God cares for us that he's always with us and that he's concerned about everything that concerns us and that he don't want us to fail he really do not want us to fail okay so it is important that we rely on God and remember that he's always with us that he provides every help that we have need of even in ways and sometimes we don't even know we need the help he's always right there And then thirdly, he always helps navigate us through life. And you may say, well, Pastor Pat, how do I really know that I'm depending on God? You really know you're depending on God when you begin to tell your problem how big God is. That's your litmus test. When you tell the problem how big God is, that's when you know that you are depending on God. If you are telling God how big your problem is, then that means that you are not quite there yet. And it's okay. We all take baby steps to get there. But again, the litmus test is is that you begin to tell your problem how big God is. That's why it's so important that we get into the word of God. We know what the word of God says so we can say what God says when our backs are against the wall. Amen. So today I want to uh, begin by sharing some ways that we can depend on God. Okay, there are a lot of ways that we can depend on God, but the Lord gave me three to share. And so I'm going to give you those three and then we'll go back and break those three down. So ways that you can depend on God. The first way is, is that you spend time daily with him by reading the Bible. I know this is not popular to some people, but it can become popular. So ways we can depend on God. Number one way is is that you spend time daily with him by reading the Bible. The second way is spending time talking to him and allowing him to talk back to you. In other words, you are uh, spending time in prayer. Some people call it prayer. Some people call it communication. Some people call it communion. However you want to put it, you know, you need to spend that time talking to him, letting him know your heart, and then he can uh, let you know what's on his heart. Amen. And then the third way is uh, by praising God daily for what he has done and what he's going to do in your life. Okay. So we're going to go back to number one. We probably only going to get through one today, um, but that's okay. We'll pick up on next week. So ways we can depend on God. The first way is, is that we spend time daily with him by reading the Bible as believers. Let me just say this as a born again believer. Okay, we should want to know the character of God as a believer. Now, if you are a believer and you don't have that desire, you can have that desire. God can give you that desire. All you have to do is ask. Okay, and it's okay that you don't have that desire. Again, we are all we are all in this race together, but we're all on different levels. And God is not condemning anybody for whatever level they're on. But you can get to a level each, whatever level you're on at this moment, it can increase. 
Let me put it that way. It's just like climbing stairs. You, you start on the bottom stair, but guess what? You can climb all the way to the top. It, it depends on you, how high you want to go, okay? So as believers, we should want to know the character of God. We should want to know how he wants us to live because we have our own plan as to how we want to live, you know. But how is it that he wants us to live? I'm reminded of that um, slogan, WWJD, what would Jesus do? You know, so as believers, we should want to know what is it that God wants me to do and how he wants me to go about doing it, okay? As a believer, we should want to hear from God. We should want to hear the voice of God so we'll know what what role to take, uh, how we need to do something, when we need to pull back, when we need to press forward. So these are important things that a believer should desire. Again, if you don't desire it, just ask, just pray to God, and he'll give you those desires. Amen? So we live in a world that tells us truth is whatever we want it to be. And that's not true. Only the word of God reveals truth. This world system don't reveal truth all the time. Sometimes you may find truth. And a lot of times you find that truth and it's twisted. But in God's plan and in his word, everything is true. So we're going to look at the scripture as it relates to that. Let's go to Psalms chapter 119. Psalms chapter 119. Those of you who are viewing, I hope you are with us. Psalms 119 verse 160. Psalms 119 verse 160. And this is the King James Version. It says, the entirety of your word is true. All of God's word is true. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. The word of God is true. And every promise, every covenant, everything that's in the Bible is true. You cannot deviate from it. The word of God is true. The, the uh, Passion Translation says the sum total of all your words adds up, adds up to absolute truth and every one of your righteous decrees is everlasting. So all of God's promises are yes and amen and they are everlasting. I don't care where you find yourself in life. You may be in your 50s now. You may live to be 100, but God's words is always true, and they are everlasting. Everything else on this earth is going to fall away, but guess what? God's word will forever stand, and that's a promise. So you can always depend on the word of God. When you can't depend on each other, you can depend on God and his word because Him and it, God and his word is one. Guaranteed. You know, I said last week, I love my husband, and he'll do whatever he can to please me. But guess what? I, I got a greater power than Larry Anthony Jackson. And I love that man, but guess what? I love Jesus. And I know that he can pull me out of any situation. Even if I got myself into it, he can pull me out. All he wants me to do is acknowledge him. God help. I messed up. And it's okay. And he ain't mad with me. That's freedom to me. You know, because sometimes we can do things and people get mad with you. But God don't get mad with you when you mess up. He just say, come on, baby. He, he was holding you by your right hand. Come on, let me, let me lead you. Brush your off. It's all right. Get up. Try it again. A God of second chance, third chance, 50 chance, pastor. His love is always there and never ending, never changes. Amen? So let's go to 2 Samuel, another chapter, another uh, passage of scripture that reveals God's word is true. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 28. This is the King James Version. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 28. And it says, and now... O Lord God, you are God. 
and your words are truth, and you have promised this goodness to your servants. God's word is true, and he has promised that to all of those who believe. Now, you may say, well, why are you taking your time to, to, to for us to read these scriptures? Because I want you to realize the word of God is the foundation for everything in life. Everything hangs on the word of God. Your faith hangs on the word of God. Your healing hangs on the word of God. Your prosperity hangs on the word of God. Your peace, your joy, all everything, every promise of God, it hangs from that word. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last scripture I want to read is John chapter 17, 17. And of course, this is the King James Version. And it says, sanctify them through thy truth. The word is truth. So God's word is true. And that's that's why you want to spend time with him in his word, because it's true. OK, so I, to, I want to begin by giving you 15 benefits. And you may say, oh, my God, 15 benefits. If we don't get through them today, we'll finish them next week. OK, 15 benefits that you get from spending time with God. Now, these are not all the benefits in the Bible, but these are the 15 that I'm going to share with you. 15 benefits of spending time with God. Okay? The first one is this. God speaks to us through his word. God will speak to you through his word. You may be out there saying, well, you know, I want to serve God, but I, you know, I can't see him. I, how can you serve somebody you can't see? Some of the things, some of the people you can't see that you are serving, you don't need to. Because guess what? You still find yourself in a hole. So the word of God speaks to you. That's how you get to know him. It is his letter to us. When God inspired man and the bible was created that is god's letter to us he's saying to us this is what i've left for you these are my promises these are my covenants these are my decrees everything you have need of is in that word i don't care what comes up in your life the word of god has an answer but you're gonna have to seek that answer See, it, the word of God was provided for you free of charge. But it's going to require you being responsible and taking the time out to get into his word to find out what his decrees are saying to you. The word of God. Okay? So the word of God speaks to us from, from the Bible. Okay? You can trust some one some of the time but you can trust God all of the time okay the second benefit is is that wisdom is gained from God's word you get wisdom from God's word God said if you lack wisdom ask but the wisdom comes from the word of God Proverbs 4 and 7 says that wisdom is the principal thing that's the principal thing so in order for us to, to walk in the wisdom of God, we first got to know what the word says. And you're going to hear a lot of this about the word of God because, again, that's the foundation. We're building a house. That house has to have a foundation. That slab has to be laid. Well, the word of God is that foundation. And then everything, all the walls around it, all the content in within that house, guess what? It's, it's now laying on a firm foundation. Otherwise, if not, it'll crumble. So it is with our lives. If we don't have that firm foundation, if we don't stand on that foundation, if we are not depending upon that foundation, it will crumble. It'll only get you so far. It's just like being in a boat. You go out on, on the sea. 
And guess what? That boat runs out of whatever you, I don't know how, what is what you put in a boat, gas, you put gas in a boat? Okay. That, that boat run out of gas, you're in the middle of the ocean, a storm come, you don't know what to do, guess what? You may sink. But if you know the man, the creator, you can call upon him, and he will stop you from sinking. But it's up to you. It's all what you want. All right. The third thing is we learn who God is. The Bible will reveal who God is. We know that he's a God of love. But there's a whole lot of other things about God. And you can find those things out by getting into the word of God. We learn who God is from the Bible, his provisions, his promises, everything, his creation, how he created us. Everything you want to know is in that word. The next thing is, is that spending time with God solidifies and strengthens your faith. It is going to strengthen your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing on a continual basis the word of God. So the word will strengthen your faith. We will become firm in our faith when we know exactly what we believe in. Because there's, there's a lot of stuff out there we can believe in. I believe in God. Almighty God. Omnipotent God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Holy Spirit. That's what I believe in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it will solidify and strengthen our faith. Our faith becomes stronger as we trust God. You know, you can't trust God or you can't trust or have faith in God if you don't spend time with him. I can't trust Elder Margaret if I don't spend time with her. I can know of her. I can know about her, but I don't know her. And so God is wanting to get us in a position where we really know him, not just talk about him. I, I want to have my own testimonies, Pastor Oliver. You know, you know, I don't I don't want to live my life based upon Pastor Oliver's testimony. I want my own testimony of how good he is. So, you know, but you got the only way you're going to be able to do that is that you got to build that relationship with God. And and he'll birth your testimonies out of that. Amen. The next thing the word of God will do, it will renew your mind. The Bible says over in Romans to uh, not be uh, to be not uh, trans. Yeah, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to this world. You know, so the word of God will renew your mind. All this, this cultural junk that's out there in the world, God will renew your mind to that stuff. Fox News, CBN, and or whatever it is, TBS and NBC and ABC and CNN. That's good for us to have knowledge of what's going on in the world. But we need to know truth. Because again, all of that stuff, it'll pass away. And when all that stuff is happening in the world, what do you have to stand on? Because it is going to get crazy in these last days. So what what's going to be your firm foundation? When your back is against the wall, what are you going to do? Who are you going to rely on and trust? It won't be CNN. <laughs> and it won't be the president of these United States. I don't care who he is or she may be. It's the word of God. Oh, don't shout me down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next thing it, it will do is that you will learn how to imitate God. You will begin to learn his ways and his precepts, and then you can imitate him. 
I'm going to do what God do. I'm going to say what God says. Well, the doctors gave me a bad report, but what did, what, what, what did the scripture say? Well, I learned in the scripture that God went about healing the sick. I learned in the scripture that he took all of my infirmities and he bare all my sickness on the cross. I learned in the scripture by his stripes I'm already healed. Why, if you already healed, Pastor, why you got all this stuff going on in your body? Well, you got an enemy. And the enemy comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's even your physical body. He's going to attack you, but what are you standing on? What's your foundation? Oh, I'm sick. I'm, I got a headache. I got, I got, I got. And you begin to claim all that stuff that you got, you got, you got. Instead of telling that stuff you got how big your God is. The next thing it does, it will give you courage. Our courage grows as our faith grows. We got to put our trust, total trust in this amazing God that we have. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Mm -mm. We ain't fearing COVID. We're not fearing any of that. He bared 39 stripes on his back for every disease, virus, germ, whatever hits the face of this earth. He's already taken care of it. Now, we will do what we need to do in the natural. We will be precaution. We will take all precautions that's necessary. But guess what? We ain't walking in fear. Uh-uh. Fear to go to the store. Fear to do this. Fear. No, we're not walking in fear. God gave me a spirit of power, love, and a well-balanced mind. Hallelujah. The next thing it would do, give us hope and joy. Spending time with the Lord will give you hope and joy. I'm going to tell you, sometimes, again, life will deal you a bad hand of cards. I have time and time and time again, again, when I, when the enemy puts pressure in my life or on me, I have to run to the presence of God. When I do that, every time, I can tell when I'm carrying something, Pastor Alva, because I wake up in the middle of the night with that thing on my mind. And I have to get it off me. And the way that I get it off me is, is that I get into the presence and I get into the word of God. When I do that, the peace will come. But if I don't do that, I'll keep playing it over and over and over in my mind, in my mind. And that's what we do. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to play it over, over and over and over again in your mind. That takes you away from from the presence of God. But if you get into the presence, oh, the peace of God, the joy of God will come over you when you begin to tell that problem how big your God is, the peace will come. The peace that will surpass of all understanding. He said, I will give you perfect peace if you keep your what? Your mind stayed on him. See, your mind is the battleground for Satan. You got to shake that stuff. Get rid of it. Don't let it linger. When you, get, you let that stuff linger, you begin <laughs> to get mad and upset and grouchy and mean and evil. Just cast it. Just let it go. God, you deal with this. You deal with these folks. You created them. You handle it because I can't carry it. And go on about your business. Amen. Another thing it does, it will remind us of God's promises. We constantly need to be reminded of God's promises because, you know, our feelings can influence us. Our body can influence how we, you know, how we feel. The cares of life can influence us. 
And God don't want us to be influenced by those things that comes from the sense realm. He wants us to be influenced by the word of God because that's our foundation. Amen. The next thing it does, it will help us to recognize false teachings. We got a lot of false teachers out there. I'm prophesying this. I'm prophesying this. I'm doing all of this stuff, you know. We sit under different folk that that's not teaching the, the word of God or whatever the case may be. No, nobody's condemning you because of that. But the word of God will, will help um, guard you against false teachings. It will make you sensitive. So when you hear something that doesn't um, align itself with the word of God, it opposes the word of God, you know, you get a check in your spirit. You know, uh uh, that's not God. Because the word of God says this. But if you don't have the word of God to compare, you don't know. You thinking they moving under the spirit of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And they moving under self. So it will help us to recognize false teaching. The next thing, it will give us instructions in righteousness that we need in life. It will give us the instructions in righteousness that we leave in need in life the bible has already told us that god has given us everything that pertains to uh, godliness um, that we need amen and then another thing it does it will enable us to combat satan this is important because a lot of times we just sit And we don't take authority. We just say, well, it's just part of life. Well, it may be a part of life, but you also have authority over that. I, this morning, um, I have been actually receiving healing in my physical body, and I woke up with a symptom this morning um, as I began to pray and get into the word of God. And, you know, and it, it kind of irritated me. Because I'm, I'm like, okay, now, <laughs> here I am trying to prepare, and you are a nuisance to me. So I just had to, out of my spirit, Pastor Oliver, it just rose up so big, and I just began to rebuke the enemy. I mean, just go into to warfare, combat. You know, you, you cannot do this. I didn't invite you here. You are not wanted. And so I need you to get off of my body right now in Jesus' name. And I mean, I had to, for a minute there, Pastor, I had to, you know, just kind of go into it with him, get into the ring with him. <laughs> you know, you get, I, sometimes you have to get into the ring with the enemy. You win anyway. You go, you're not going in there, oh, I'm hoping and I'm praying. I think so. No, you going into that ring with the battle already won. So, but I had to, I had to let him know you are not welcome. Get off me, just like you would in the in the real world. We not gonna even go there. Get off me. The last but not least, God becomes real in your life. When you get into that word, God becomes real in your life. As you spend time in the Bible daily, we see the difference that God is making in our lives. And if you just call on him, he is always willing to be at your rescue. There is safety under the wings of God safety i'm safe with him he protects me thank you jesus so our thoughts become godlier our actions become loving and we become more others focused instead of self-focused it's the word of god that transforms us from the inside out amen well, I think my time is up. I appreciate you being with us this morning again. I hope that you've learned something from the word of God today. 
and uh, we will pick up on next week. Father, we are so grateful again for the opportunity to share the word of God. Father, your word is so full of love and promises. Father, you just so um, desire to provide for us and take care of us and meet every need that we have. And God, we're not bothering you. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't bother you how many times we have to come to you. You're always there with an open arm. I thank you for that, Father. Father, sometimes life can get heavy. The load seems to be unbearable. And there's someone that's watching this morning. And you feel that way. You feel like the load is unbearable. That you can't take anymore. That you just want to give up, cave in, and quit. But I want to encourage you this morning. You can find safety in Jesus Christ. He can give you the strength that you need to keep going. He can remove the pressure and take the pressure off. Trust him. Give him a chance. Talk to him like you would talk to a friend. Share your innermost thoughts with him. And trust that he will share his innermost thoughts with you. There's always a brighter side. Yeah. His mercies are new each day. Don't you throw the towel in. You stand strong on the word of God. Say what God says about that situation. I don't know what it is today. But you know. And if you don't have a scripture that you can stand on, you can stand on this one scripture, that the Lord is your shepherd, and you shall not want. That one scripture will carry you where you need to go. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for that, O oh God. We speak peace over the minds of your people. We speak joy in their hearts, O oh God. We speak healing, O oh God, over their lives. While they may be experiencing symptoms and pain, O oh God, we thank you, O oh God, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, they are healed. We release the healing angels by their side right now, Father God. And they are going to work on the behalf of that individual. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for provision. <laughs> we thank you for protection. We thank you for a roof over our heads, oh God. We thank you for food on the table. We thank you for a job we can go to. We thank you for transportation. We thank you for family, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for your blood, Father, for it covers all, Father God. We thank you for your love this morning. It's unconditional, oh God. We thank you. And God, we give you praise. And we ask it in Jesus' name. If you are out there this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can get to know him. If you want to depend upon him, if you need that dependency in your life, all you have to do is believe that God sent his only son, Jesus, and confess that with your mouth. Let me lead you in a simple prayer. Say, God, I believe you sent your only begotten son that I may live a life that is full of joy, 
peace and love. I believe that the Son of God has risen. I believe that in my heart. Now, God, I confess out of my mouth, I'm asking you to come live in my heart. Be Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, guess what? You are a born-again believer. You can walk in a newness of life. You can walk in the peace and the joy of God. I know it gets hard sometimes, but there is hope, and that hope is in Jesus Christ, the Son of Jesus, the Son of God, who is Jesus Christ. Amen? If you may be asking the question, what do I do next? You can go to our website, nloc-outreach.com. You can click on Now What tab, and guess what? You can read some information. There's information there that you can read, and you will know what you need to do next. It's, it's more than just giving your life to Christ, but there are other steps that you must take. And so that information is available to you. Also, too, we want to give you an opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom of God. Not sowing seed into a man or a church, but you're sowing your seed, you're giving your seed to God because you love him first. And because you love him, you give. The Bible has already declared that if we give, it's given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, he will cause men to give into our bosom. All he wants you to do is acknowledge. Just acknowledge. So we want to give you that opportunity. You can do that by going to our website, click on the Give Online tab, and you can sow your seed there. Amen? Hallelujah. We are so glad again that you joined. Don't forget, next week we will continue this series. Matter of fact, we will finish up this series on next week. Remember that Jesus is Lord and all of your getting get understanding. <laughs>